Welcome back everybody. It is the 29th of October and we're back out here on the trap line and I got to my first set here which is setting fine but I'm going to go ahead and relure and rebait all my sets just because of all the rain we've had. It's been terrible just raining like crazy the last three days so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to make a few more sets and we're going to rebait and lure all the other ones but in the meantime I'm going to send you over with my buddy Kevin. He had a pretty cool uh, deal yesterday so uh, he videotaped it a little bit. Sorry about the quality, but it is what it is. Here's uh, some of uh, the video he took yesterday. I haven't heard from him yet on today's trap line, but hope you enjoy a little bit on this video. Hey guys, uh, back here the day after Cliff and I ran our line. So it is now the 28th, yesterday was the 27th. Third check day, thought I'd give you a couple of updates since we didn't catch anything but a raccoon and a possum the other day. Um, Cool thing about this set, Cliff made that set in the background, which is awesome. So thanks for your help, Cliff. This is my first double, which is awesome. Uh, everything I do, you better take with a huge grain of salt. Uh, this is a big victory for me. So a double up on uh, on Fox is pretty pretty cool. So I'll try to keep you updated. These are sets number seven and eight for the day. I've got about 30 more to go check. So hopefully we have some more luck. If not. Uh, thanks again for joining me. Bug Cliff and maybe we'll go trap some mink together. Uh, thanks guys. Well, I've checked four of my sets here and I uh, got to this one. And I definitely missed one right there. You can see uh, there's some uh, wool, sheep wool, that I shoved down in the hole with a bait and uh, my trap bed's right there. It looks like that fox stepped right there. There's a print, and then you can see a perfect fox print right there. I just missed the dirty bugger. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, dig this up and re reset this trap. See if I can't nail him tonight. Okay, so I'm going to kind of explain the method to my madness right here. So my trap bed is right there, and I took all the old wet uh, grass and stuff off the pan and uh, replaced it with the dry stuff. But I know that fox approached the trap from this side, the field side, and right now I set it up so I'm going to try to make that fox, if it approaches from this side, I'm going to try to make him come around and get that hole from that side so I banked that side and pretty much the only reason I did that is try to force him to come on this side of the trap and come around here and hit that pan so that's why I made that mound right there kind of covering the hole from this side and if he's going to come and hit it again I'm going to try to get him to come in from this way so that's kind of what I was thinking with that hopefully it works this time okay I'm going to go ahead and make a fisher set right here on this log this leaning log. I have a trail camera set up on a scrape right here and I had a, a nice fisher go right in front of this camera the other night so we only have a couple of days left to trap fisher or attempt to trap fisher. I haven't caught any yet and I've got six fisher sets out across the road from this block and I have yet to catch a fisher but uh, I'm gonna set another trap right here on this log and I'll go ahead and videotape setting this trap for you. Okay, there's my finished uh, fisher set right here. One hole, so if you look up this log, all you got is that trap to go through, and I've, I've put a bunch of pine brow and stuff on each side of it to try to deter them from hopping. You don't want them to hop over it, you want them to go through this hole. So I got stuff on the outside and on uh, the top 
to deter them from going anywhere else but in that trap. And if you look in the trap, I got a duck that we shot the other morning that I already got breasted out and stuff. And I put that right atop, above the trap by about 16 inches or so, a little over a foot. And then of course you have to cover your bait here in New York State, so I covered it up. And uh, yeah, a few things you want to make sure is there's no trees next to it that that fisher could climb and then hop over to get to that bait without going up the log. So this thing I want to I'm gonna to want to break off, but I don't want to break off too close because I got my trap wired to it. I can't go from that tree to that tree without going through the trap. And then another thing I'm gonna do is take another duck that I have breasted out and I'm gonna go from the base of this tree and I'm just gonna rub it up and down so this smells like, you know, the duck that's up in the tree. And I'm gonna take and drag it about 30 feet over that way. I'm gonna drag it 30 feet over that way. So if that fisher's working this wood line right here, it hits that scent trail of that duck and it should come right up into the trap here. So I'll grab the duck. So I rubbed that duck all the way up and down that log there. And then I'm gonna take and drag it, like I said, all the way over there and over there. So that way if it hits that, where I dragged it, it should come right up to this trap. And I'm gonna set a cubby set for a fisher over here just because I know that fisher's recently worked in this area. So if I don't catch him in this one, I might possibly catch him in that cubby set over there. So let's go do that one. I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering, in New York State, you're not allowed to have the animal hanging out of the trap or you know out of uh, the tree that your trap is in. So a lot of people are probably wondering about me wiring that there. But when I wire that trap there, I just do one loop if you can see that it's very it's barely wired on there so as soon as that trap snaps that fisher will flail around a little bit and that uh, will come right off and be laying right here on the ground have it wired to that tree so that's a totally legal trap baits covered everything is good to go now if everything goes right and I cross my fingers they'll have a fisher in it but we're gonna go right over here and if I can't get them in that one, we're gonna do a pocket set right in between these two logs here. These fishers really like running these logs. I've seen them a different, bunch of different times bow hunting. They're always bouncing from log to log. So we're gonna take, I got a New York State legal box here. And uh, we're gonna take that box and tuck it right in this pocket right here and make a pocket set for the fisher. So if we don't get them in that trap, we might get them in this trap. Okay, right there's the the uh, okay. So right there's my first set, and right here's my second set. And the fisher should uh, come through here, and maybe one of these will pique his interest. All I got in there for bait is a breasted out mallard duck that we shot the other morning, and hopefully fishers like duck. I should put some feathers up on top of it for eye appeal, but we'll leave that. I know for a fact we have a fisher right here in this area as of the other night, so we'll see. Well, folks, if you remember last year, I, I uh, called a video, what a tragedy. And uh, that was where I had that coyote right off the left side of that ditch right there. I had that coyote in that trap, and when I walked up to it, it, uh, freaked out and spun around and stuff well anyways it it uh cut its foot off well i had three toes left in the trap and took off running down the food plot and i didn't have my gun ready to shoot it so anyways that's where i had that coyote last year and this year i made the set right here right off this field edge and then they run up the edge of this food plot right through here too it just runs right up the path right here and then another one right there so 
here's the set right here. It is a dirt hole. The hole's right in there. Obviously the traps are right there. I used some of uh, my buddy Kevin's creation. Some of that stuff. We'll go set up another one. Goose is really acting like I was looking for a friend. But I got another set up there in the corner of the food plot. It's where I usually have a trail camera that comes out. And I've got all kinds of pictures of the fox and coyote coming out of that trail. So I set one right there. And I'm going to set one right here at this point. Got a fence line right there. And then uh, our compost pile. Cornfield. All kinds of hedgerows that come together to a point right here. And then here's our road that you come in on that these coyotes are always running. This goose is really confused about what it's doing. I think it, it's lost. We'll go ahead and get this set in right here. I'll video this one. Okay, that's a wrap on that set. Best part about this one is, we'll be able to check it right from the house. <laughs>